Hey, welcome back to Same Schmooze. This is your girl Tanya D. Floyd. I am um sitting down after a little bit of activity outside um, in the streets. But uh, I wanted to come and share a few things with you real quick, if I can make it real quick. Um, first things first. Um, get a second opinion. Second thing, um, yeah, don't take no for an answer. Third thing, um, get what you need. Don't stop till you get what you need, okay? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So, for years, I've had issues with my knees. I had, they told me I had arthritis when I was like 17. This is in the 80s, okay? So, I used to go to the doctor for different things, like when it was real bad, because, you know, um, well, in the 80s, I was coming out of high school and I was going to work and I was just very active all the time. I just stayed in the streets because it was something to do at all times, right? In the 90s, I slowed down a little teeny bit. I was still going to work and catching the train and all the daily stuff and I had to switch and put my tennis shoes on so I can run in case of emergency and stuff, you know, all that. And then, you know, over the years, it just got progressively worse, right? So here I am in my 50s, and it's at its absolute peak of misery, right? So I've had the same primary care physician since at least 2012. I didn't go back much farther to see how far her name went. I don't remember when I got her, but at least for the last 12 years, right? So every time I go for my health assessment or anytime something comes up, I'll email her or I'll tell her, look, I'm having this pain. I'm too young for this. Like, it's debilitating. Like, I can't walk up a flight of stairs without feeling like I'm going to fall down because, you know, my knee hurts so bad. Or I can't go work on a job site doing renovations and stuff and then come home and get out of my car in the garage. I got to slide out my car seat and I can barely make it to my room that night. Like, I'm 53 years old. What, what are we doing here? <laughs> and each time it would be well, if you get some of the weight off, well, that's how the weight got on. I can't move, lady. I can't really do nothing. My life kind of sucks because the best position for me is um, on my side watching TV. And people think from looking from the outside in, you know, my family and everybody's just like, why you don't do nothing? Because it hurt. But I ain't really want to complain or seek attention, so I really didn't say much. It's just I'd rather be here. And I would for a lot of reasons. You know, but mostly because it hurt. So, ain't nobody going to understand. They go, oh, pasha, pasha me, you know. It's nothing. You always acting like, oh, God, everything's so bad, blah, blah, blah. You know, they'll turn it into something. That I, I'm not talking about it because you're not worthy of my minutes. I'm not going to be able to get them back and that whole kind. You, you know how it goes. So, anyway, I ain't telling nobody because, I mean, I told my mother. She understands because she gave it to me. It's her problem. Mm -hmm. I heard it from her. But, you know, I ain't going to just sit around and talk about it with people because then they get to, you know, feel like they got ownership over your stuff and they can tell you things that they really ain't qualified to tell you. Stop talking to them people, too. Did I say a three? If that was it, if I didn't say a three, that's a three. Don't tell everybody because they're going to try to make it about them and what they think. They don't know nothing. So, anyway, I'm talking to this doctor who's supposed to know something, but. We're not going to disparage, disparage that lady's name or anything. But, you know, it really wasn't clicking with her because I've had her for 12 years. But I think she might be around 40. So she's just starting to get it. You know, the windows of enlightenment kind of open at 40-ish. So maybe she's just now understanding how, you know, different patients respond to different things at certain ages and such. But anyway, um, so... I've been telling her all the time, my knees hurt. They hurt real bad. I don't like it. I take ibuprofen, and yeah, I, I would like to lose weight, but it, it seems not to work like it used to. I used to know the combination to lose weight every single time, and that gallbladder surgery thing I had in 2011, I had to go on this crash, no-fat diet, and that did it, but I was lightheaded and dizzy, and I don't like feeling like that, so I found a new way to incorporate some of that and do it, and I lost like 20 pounds on my own once, you know, after that. But I can't do it no more. My body just be doing its own thing. And it's telling me it wants different things. And the menopause be menopausing. And 
yeah, all of these things working against me. So my body is like having a rebellion and I can't control it. I don't, I don't even know it anymore. We're not friends right now. And I got to tell you, for a little while, I was defeated. And I was just like, I'm just like here. Because it don't hurt when I lay here. And I had given up. 100% given up. Just like, it's going to be what it's going to be until something changes. And then when it changes, I'm going to go with that. Whatever it is. So I waited for the catalyst to come. But then one day I was just sitting here and I was like, let me give this lady one more chance. I said, I'm going to send her a message and tell her my knees hurt really bad and I can't take it no more. And I don't understand what we're supposed to be doing different. I went to find an appointment. There weren't any. There weren't any. Not in my area, not the ones I wanted to go to and not with her. So I did get care now which Kaiser has a, as an option. You could just wait a few minutes and talk to a doctor. So I did a video visit like that. And within 10 minutes, another lady doctor who picked up the video chat asked me a couple of questions. She said, let's get you some physical therapy and some x-rays. I said, what? Okay. <laughs> and within three days, I had both accomplished. And I was like, what? Oh, no, not the x-ray. She wasn't the knee lady. She the lady that sent me to get the MRI. The next night at midnight, 12.30 p.m. No, I'm sorry, a.m. on a Friday, Saturday night situation. I was in there in the MRI to get my MRI on my back. That's what it was. It was in my back because both of them was a problem. All right, so I did get care now. And this nice lady doctor comes on. She's brown like me. And she asked me a couple of questions. And she said, have you ever had an, any imaging done? And I was like, no. I told her my back was like such a problem now. I can't really get out of bed and straighten up. I can't stand up straight on my own at this point because it hurts so bad. And even if I didn't feel as much pain, I couldn't straighten it up if I wanted to because something's wrong. She said, let's get you an MRI. 12.30 that same night. I was at Kaiser getting the MRI, and a few days later, I had the results. Let me tell y'all, to be validated in such a way that there's evidentiary support that says there's something legitimately going on that is not something in your mind or that weight, losing weight, any amount of weight will reverse, is a special kind of feeling. When I got those results, they were lengthy. It was a lot of words and none of them did I understand, but I looked them up gradually one by one as I encountered them in the little report. But basically some narrowing of some passageways, some pinching of some nerves, some degeneration of some discs, all in my lower back. My L345 ain't acting right at all, just janky, rubbing all up against stuff, leaning back, leaning back. What? How your, how your disc gonna lean back on you? Anyway, stuff like that. And um, all the words mean that it's just gonna continue to get worse over time because I'm 53. And because um, whatever is wrong is wrong. So I ate all of that. <laughs> I digested it. And I said, okay, we're working with something. Now we can, we can do something next. So once I got all that result, I said, you know what? This is working. I get care now a different day. I look for appointments first. She ain't had none. I got care another day. I said, listen, my knee's hurting real bad and I can't take it no more. And in conjunction with my back, I can't move most days. I don't want to get out of my bed. When I stand up, it's a real problem. And when I get out of my bed and go down the hall to get on the stairs, I don't even want to take the first step because I got to hold the rail. And either knee that I come down on first, it's just going to make me want to just turn around and go back to the room. It's, it's just 10. 10 all day. Every day. Up and down the stairs, I can't just sit in any chair. I might not be able to get out of that chair. So I got to find a chair that's high enough for me to kind of, you know, sink into a little bit. And then I can just pop up without having to bend the knee 90 degrees or more. Can't sit in everybody's chair. Guys, nah, let me see if this, I'm going to stand. Hurt real bad, okay? So, got care now. He said, um... Let's get you an x-ray. And um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what that tells us, right? Got my x-rays the next morning. No, that very morning. It was like an 8 o'clock video, and I was in around the corner getting x-rays at 9.30 that day, right? X-rays came back. Osteo osteoarthritis, some, 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 some. It's issues. It's real things going on in there. Both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they got some mystery metal. How do I have mystery metal pieces in my knee? And nobody can tell me what it is. Two times they say, that looks like surgical clips. I've never had surgery, sir. Where where'd they come from? I'm, I'm, I don't understand. Doctors, both of them, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Miss Floyd, but that ain't what your problem is today. It's not what's causing you the pain, so let's take care of that first. You want me to give you some needles or some pills? What you want? <laughs> and I was like, ow. Mr. Uh, P.A., what do they call him? He's the pain management doctor. I went to him yesterday morning, and he gave me some wonderful pills who, that have helped significantly in, le like, less than two full days. I feel like something's happening because my knees are not screaming at me. Maybe it's the weather. I don't know. It's some good days. I'm going to take them, and amen. Okay? So, anyway, two video visits with somebody else, and I got my x-rays, my MRI, I got physical therapy. Oh, let me tell y'all, this first physical therapy is funny. I went to a session one time. The lady did a little bit of stuff, asked me a lot of questions, asked me to do some moves. She gave me some exercises to do, some green bands to do with exercises with. And then she said, go online and some videos if you need some help. That's physical therapy. Go home and do it. That's it. That's it. That's physical therapy. So I got to do my own at home. Anyway, um, but I got all that done. In like two straight weeks, I had lots of appointments, got my eyes checked and everything. Everything, all my stuff lined up because I went and did all the things because I did not take no for an answer this time. And I did not um, take her word, you know, as law with the whole lose weight and take ibuprofen. It's more than that, clearly. So I have all my answers. I have a plan. I have an appointment for my epidural because, yes, we're we not going to keep... I, we're not living currently. I owe it to myself to live fully. I cannot do that in the current state. So, yes, I'm going to get the needle in my back. I'm going to tell you all about it when it's done, too. And meanwhile, he was like, you want me to give you some cortisone shots or you want to try this pill first? So I've tried the pill first for the knee situation. I don't know if I'm going to need a cortisone shot, but I'm going to get it if I do. So we're going to see how this goes. But, yeah, some things... Something different had to happen, and it was, <sighs> why that day? Why, I, I'm kicking myself a little bit because I should have done this a long time ago, but I I kind of agree with her. Yeah, I do need to lose weight. Maybe it'll help me, but I knew it was just um, not going to get better, but I thought I could live with it that way. But why should I? That was foolishness. I shouldn't have to live like that. Nobody should. We all deserve a chance to, to live fully. And even if you ain't happy, you can go get some happiness. <laughs> I couldn't even live, leave my room. I couldn't go outside. It hurt me every day to think about any appointment, any reason to go and do some things, walk some places. Because as soon as I get to the bottom of steps, my back going to be on fire. And as soon as I get in and out the car a couple of times, my knees going to hurt. So it was, uh, I was a prisoner. I ain't feel like it. Prisoner right here. I didn't want to. But I got up today and I said, oh my God, my knees ain't said nothing. I cooked breakfast. I came back and sat down. My knees ain't say nothing. <laughs> and then I went outside and did some stuff. I stood up a little bit too long and my back was talking to me. It was it was telling me some stuff wasn't right. So I sat on down. And then I came on home. And my knees still not fussing at me. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. One change, two weeks. I'm don't take no for an answer. Advocate for yourself. And whenever they tell you something and it's really not enough, I don't care. Go to urgent care. Get all the tests. But you know what? When you go to these doctors, too, you got to know the right stuff to say. Like, I notice when you go to urgent care, they ask you a series of questions and stuff. But you need to be, like, real specific about 
how the thing occurred when it began um you can't be all vague like well it's been going on for years like it, it has but okay well currently i'm experiencing symptoms which will not allow me to get up and down from a chair like a normal person should the first thing i said actually was my hydraulics don't work he laughed at me okay but you understand what i'm talking about right i'm supposed to be able to get up and down i can't do none of that i need to hold both armrests to get out of every chair i need to pause once i get on my feet i'm 53 and I used to be real, real cute. I'm a little bit cute still, but I was real cute. I was four and a half inch pumps cute, okay? No, I can't live like this. So I'm not gonna live like this. So anyway, I say all that to say, advocate for yourself. And if it don't feel right, go ask somebody else. If it still don't feel right, go to urgent care a couple of times. Make them run all the tests. Mm -hmm. Something happened to my knee. Which one? Both of them. Did you have an injury? Yep. I was coming down the stairs and I heard something pop. I don't care. Say what you need to say. Get the stuff done. Because they just kind of push you along. And I have learned that they're overworked. Somebody I know told me that doctor had like 2,000 patients or 1,000 patients. Something ridiculous. They don't really... The, the personal care standard cannot be what it used to be because they got so many people it's an assembly line they don't know you and they got to refresh on your history each and every time but if they give you a 20 minute visit for every kind of appointment that you have are they really doing that no they do it when they get in this in the room with you and look you up they pull your chart up and they scroll that's not like i need us to be here but if we're not going to do that, that's fine. We can rotate y'all too. Put them on the assembly line and go hit get care now and talk to whatever doctor is up next. And do that a few times if you got to. But get your stuff taken care of because I'm telling you, it's like literally night and day. I went yesterday and today, whatever the name, I can't even remember the name of the pill he gave me. But these pills, I only got to take one a day. And I got some steroids. They gave me, they gave me some prednisone. It's probably boosting the whole thing. This anti-inflammatory thing going on. Let me tell y'all, some days, speaking of anti-inflammatory, some days I will feel like somebody poured me into my skin and it was too full and nothing else will fit. So my body just feels really, really tight from my neck to my toes. And I can't really move and clothes hurt. I did a video a little while back. It must have been over a year now. But I was going through all the pretty lingerie I had bought that I can't wear. Because the bras feel like they're cutting into my flesh. They not. But it feel like it. Just something is going on. I don't know what that is. We're going to get care now about that another day. But for now, we're just going to get this stuff fixed. And we're going to get moving. And maybe it won't hurt so bad. And maybe we can lose a few pounds. And then we can worry about how all the body parts must swell at one time. I still don't understand how that works. But, again, we'll do that next. Because <laughs> it don't happen as many times as this other stuff happens. So, let's get these out of the way. But yeah, um, sometimes my inflammation is just so bad, it, it's my whole body just feels like it's going to pop if you touch me and don't touch me. Just don't touch nothing. Don't put a little bit of pressure right here. Any of my soft parts, just don't touch it. And I also got, um, I felt dumb a little bit because when I had sciatica back in November and I couldn't move for a whole month, a literal whole month, and I was on medication that had me feeling like my head was drooping all day and I had to keep reminding myself to pick it up. Muscle relaxes and them steroids and that ibuprofen 800. Yeah, they had your girl a little droopy. droopy okay? But it was working because I didn't feel no pain. Alright, so anyway, um, ever since that thing happened, I have not had full feeling in my left leg or foot. Six months, yeah. I I should have been saying something, and I did. I sent her an email, and she was like, "Make an appointment and come in." And I just couldn't find that, so I stopped looking. But this day, I did get care now because all the things was like, no. Nah. So I still don't have full feeling in my left leg and foot because of the way my discs and my vertebrae are lined up and leaning on that uh, L5 S1 whatever that 
zone is with that sciatic nerve. And that day when I had the pain so bad, I was going to rip off my own leg and throw it away. Yeah, um, it's been way too long. So, anyway, I, it's a real issue. So, uh, they can't really fix the things, but they can take my pain down. So, I'll, I'll go with that for now. Um, cause I don't really want nobody cutting my back open under any circumstances. So yeah, if you gotta put a needle in there, that's fine. I'll take that and we'll see what happens. Cause all my stuff is moderate. It's not serious yet, but it's going to keep going. So, um, but yeah, that's what's going on with me. And I probably gained 50 pounds since last time anybody seen me. So, um, I got some work to do cause I don't feel good. I don't like none of it. My body is at war with me, and I'm, I'm going to fight back because I ain't really no quitter, even though I had quit. <laughs> I I'm back. I'm back. I'm fighting. So, <laughs> yeah, um, something else about weight loss. I've been looking for different ways to, I want to get a jump start. I don't want to, you know, go on a diet or weight loss plan where I'm restricted. I can't live restricted. I want to live freely. And my menopause be telling me sometimes I got to do certain stuff. And I can't be fighting my, myself. Because I'm telling you, your girl was down. I was down in a black hole. Like, I can't. I just can't. I don't have no fight in me. And I don't want to be fighting myself again. Because the lows were low. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't feel good. I don't like any of this. This is not me. This is not how I want to be. So, yeah, I don't want to be on a weight loss plan that makes me hate myself because I can't eat something or hate my life because I can't drink a Pepsi or anything. And I don't really need to go looking for no needles and stuff and all them. What's the new uh, trendy um, diabetes drugs? Everybody using to lose weight and stuff. And she mentioned them a couple of times. She's like, I'm not leaning you toward that. But she said more than more than once. She said at least twice that, um, you know, I could consider those. So I've been researching different things. And I would like to get something that helps me lose weight. Boom. So I can feel the results and then I can keep it going. You know, because I can't look around every single week and not lose two pounds a week or not lose one pound a week. And I just be like, oh my God. You know, I, I got to treat myself better. So I want something that's going to help me get a good boost. And then I can keep up the momentum because results feed me and they make me want to keep going. So speaking of weight loss, um, pooping is your friend. Uh, me and my mother talk all the time about different things that she would like to do and not do and things that she won't eat because they send her to the bathroom. And I'm like. I probably shouldn't tell y'all her business, but whatever. She gave me all these issues. So anyway, um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, if you just popping out a few pellets a day, you ain't healthy. You're not moving nothing. Everything in there just sluggish and you slowly dying. So find a way. What's your trigger? That's what we always say. What is your trigger? What makes you go and be productive? For me, a cup of coffee and a piece of dark chocolate. A good piece of, like, Ghirardelli, you know, that San Francisco dark chocolate. The good dark chocolate. Um, not the Super Super 94, whatever, because those be having the metals in it, the uh, toxic metal stuff. I go for the um, pink bag, and it says it's a raspberry filling, but I have read it, and I have learned that it's flaxseed and beetroot in that chocolate. So it's got a nice little flavor in it, and it's tricking you into thinking those raspberry seeds, that's flaxseed. Those are good for you, though. You can put them in your smoothie, but go ahead and get you some dark chocolate if that helps you to make moves like it does me. Um, but yeah, find whatever it is that makes you go, and not violently i mean something to just help things along you know smooth it out and just take everything on away right so yeah no pellets you gotta have productive bowel movements uh, several times a day every single day if you ain't going every day you have a problem find a thing get some ginger fresh ginger it's good grate it up put it in some tea um add some lemon add some turmeric or make a nice pineapple smoothie and put some ginger in that. Find your ways to get the 
inflammation down and to help the digestion. Ginger is good to help you digest things better. So, um, dark chocolate is one of my things. Ginger helps me too. If I um, put it in my tea and stuff, I use honey. That's a good, that's a good talk. I mean, what do you call it? A good tonic for anything. Nice warm drink with some ginger and some honey in it. You can just put them two things in there for real. And you still got you a nice situation. But yeah, find your thing to make you productive. And um, not violently, but just helps to encourage things to move along. And that'll get you moving. Because you'll feel lighter. You'll feel well balanced. It's just it's just a different kind of feeling when you walk around and you know your core cool, not clogged up with junk. Right now, I'm having a little bit of issue. <laughs> so, um, I ran out of dark chocolate. I'm going to have me some ginger tea. It's my friend. Um, I can't have my Dunkin' Donuts coffee right now, but I can have some ginger tea, and that'll help me, to, you know, calm things down and just help them get going. So anyway, um, find your thing. Don't take no for an answer. Keep pressing. Um, say the right things in those little interviews, and you know, make them go look deeper to find out what's bothering you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I let it get this far and because I just accepted that there was nothing else that could be done and I wasted so much time and I'm ashamed because, oh God, it just felt so depressive. I read all the time how black women... Um, have high functioning anxiety and depression, and I'm I'm probably right there a candidate, yeah, because I just be pushing through stuff. If I had to get up and go to work every day, hurting as it was, I would just take the pills all day long, every single day. Can you imagine what's doing to my stomach and my liver? Just taking ibuprofen, six to eight hundred milligrams, three times every single day, just to get through life. I didn't want to do that no more, so I stopped taking that, and I was just laying here. And my son, I probably owe him several apologies because I be like making him go get everything from. Can you do this? Can you give me that? Can you? Yeah, he. Got, I'm on his nerves. I know. I'm, I'm gonna do something for him. But um, yeah, mama feeling a little bit better now. My knees not screaming at me. My ankles were swollen this morning, but they coming down. So between my fluid pill and my two new pill friends, um, for the next at least five days, I'm gonna be um. A different woman so I'm not gonna get up and cry every time I gotta go to the bathroom can you imagine let me t I was talking to somebody the other day I'm gonna let y'all go in a few seconds I was talking to somebody the other day and we were talking about how back pain can stop you from living life because you never realize how many things you actually need your back for until you don't have your back working for you girls you gotta sit on the toilet look knees and back screaming at me sit down you gotta stand up what if you're in one of the bathrooms where ain't nothing to hold on to on the side? You can't lean on the sink. How you get up? You got to rock it. Can you imagine? You got to rock to get up off the top. Or you got to lean on whatever's nearby. Gross. In some bathrooms. But you, you got to use all these supports to get yourself back up. And then you got to squat so you can wipe. If your back hurts, all of that is agony. <laughs> it's funny, but it ain't funny. Let me tell you. Sit down on the bed. Get up off the bed. Gotta roll out the bed some days. Then you gotta stand straight up. Takes a little bit. Cracking and popping all, all going on. Just stand on up. And then you gotta put one foot in front of the other. And get it on to the bathroom or down the hall. Wherever you're trying to get to. And getting dressed. Don't. Don't get me started on getting dressed. Some days I don't even know what clothes gonna fit. I hate going places. I don't know what I'm gonna put on. I gotta go through a couple of things and it's all gonna hurt. The bra gonna hurt. The shirt gonna hurt. The pants gonna hurt. And then I'm gonna need help putting on my shoes and socks cause my back hurt and my knees hurt and I can't really put my leg up here and tie my shoe or nothing and I can't really sit down and pull my foot up to me where I can. Yeah, ain't no pulling your foot up to tie the shoe. None of that's going on in in this life. Okay. So um usually what I do is I 
I wish I could show you, but okay, so I have a chaise lounge across from my bed and I can put my foot up on that and like extend my leg and I can just, just get my hand inside the sock and kind of slide it onto the toes and then I can pull it onto the rest of my foot and then I just stopped untying my shoes all together and I just stick my foot back in there now and um it looks dumb and I'm too old for this but I don't have to tie the shoe if I could just put my foot in it and take it back out because it ain't tied tight and um yeah that's my life <laughs> Whew. but we're gonna get better because we got some answers and we have a plan and um yeah Standing up to brush your teeth, burn, baby burn. All kinds of things that have not been easy. <sighs> Again, I'm embarrassed. But it happened. And uh, I've taken steps to get by it. But this, I'm, I, I ain't the only one. Stuff happens all the time to people because the medical professionals can't or won't take the time to investigate and give you a, a solid answer and a plan. I read a lot about how black women in medicine aren't really clicking these days because, you know, they don't take us seriously about our pain and everything. And I'm mad because I feel like that's what happened. If I was a skinny white girl in pain, it would look wrong to everybody. So they would just send me to get a bunch of stuff done, right? But here I am, morbidly obese by all the charts. And that's got to be the first part of the problem that we need to fix, right? Anyway, um, it is what it is, but I'm advocating for me. And now that I know that I was wronged, I'm going to... Um, keep making sure anytime something happens I make them look a little deeper and I'm not going to just say I can live with that because I can't I, I need to live fully fully I need to have joy and I need to have hope so getting up out of the bed is the first step to joy and hope um, I have accomplished that significantly <laughs> to this day and I, I hope going forward it continues so I don't know. Let that be a word of encouragement for somebody who might have been in a similar boat. Um, get on up, girl. Go make them find out what's wrong with you and then work your plan. Um, have a great evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye.